Hi guys, pardon my stopping halfway. I had a visitor um, that I needed to talk to you real fast. Um, so this is the back of the unit one review. We're evaluating now using our unit circle or our reference angle chart, whatever you prefer. Um, whenever we're evaluating, we really only care about two things. We need to know the reference angle, and we also need to know the quadrant we're in, which is why we've practiced most of those things already. So let's just start right here at the beginning. I recognize this as a quadrantal. Remember, 180 degrees is over here. So I'm gonna use my coordinates. This is gonna be backwards one, up or down zero. And our coordinates always go cosine, comma, sine. So this is the cosine value and the sine value. They want sine of 180, so the answer is zero. Let's look at part B, negative 45 degrees. Well, wait a minute, negative 40, 45 would be here, so if I'm going down, I'm gonna be here. My reference angle is 45, my quadrant is quadrant four. So if I want tangent of 45, this is in my reference angle chart, it's the same as pi over four. If I want um, tangent of 45, the answer is one. Tangent in the fourth quadrant is negative. Okay. I'm gonna do seek in a second, let's go down here first. Um, if I were to draw a picture for this, I know that 330 is gonna be here. The reference angle is 30 degrees because it's 30 degrees away from the x-axis. And we're in the fourth quadrant. Cosine of a reference angle of 30 um, is gonna be uh, root three over two. Cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive. Okay. Secant is the reciprocal, we're gonna jump here now. Secant's the reciprocal of cosine. So I'm gonna actually evaluate it for cosine and then I'll take the reciprocal. So this is a quadrantal, it's here. And my coordinate is over zero, upper, sorry, over one, positive one, up or down zero. So this is my cosine, this is my sine. So I know that cosine of zero is equal to one. Secant of zero is just the reciprocal of cosine. So my final answer is just one divided by one, which is one. Okay, let's move on. Here I have sine of five pi over six. My reference angle is pi over six. My quadrant, well notice the numerator is one less than the denominator, so that puts me in quadrant two. Sine of pi over six is one half. Sine in the second quadrant is positive. Okay. Here my reference angle again is pi over four. Um, my quadrant is quadrant two because my numerator is one less than my denominator. Cosine of pi over four is root two over two. Cosine in the second quadrant is negative. You might be thinking, how do I know my quadrant so fast? Remember, it's my all students take calculus. In the first quadrant, I'll make a little note up here. All trig functions are positive. Here, sine is positive. Here, tangent is positive. Here, cosine is positive. That's where all students take calculus. That phrase comes from, okay? Let's look at G. My reference angle, again, is pi over four. My quadrant is now quadrant three because my numerator is one more than my denominator. Tangent of pi over four is one. Um, tangent in quadrant three is positive, okay? H. My reference angle is pi over three. If I were to draw a quick picture for this, remember my um, pi over three would be in the first quadrant, but it's negative, so it's gonna be in quadrant four. Sine of pi over three is root three over two. Sine in the fourth quadrant is negative. Okay. Cosi, oh sorry, pi over six. My reference angle is pi over six. I'm gonna be in quad, um, because this is negative, instead of going up for pi over six, I'm going down pi over six. Notice it's, it's cosecant, so I need to figure out sine first. Okay, well um, sine of pi over six is one half, sine in the fourth quadrant is negative. So if I want cosecant, I need the reciprocal. I flip this upside down, that's gonna give me negative two. Okay, cotangent's the reciprocal of tangent, so now I'm gonna be doing the same process for tangent first. So I need my, my reference angle is pi over four. 
I'm in the second quadrant because 3 is 1 less than 4. Okay, tangent of 3 pi over 4. Well, tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Tangent in the second quadrant is negative. If I want cotangent, I need 1 divided by this. So my final answer will also be negative 1 because 1 divided by negative 1 is still negative 1. Okay, this is a quadrantal. 3 pi over 2 is down here. That's over 0, down 1. Remember, we have cosine, comma, sine. So sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Its reciprocal is also negative 1. Okay, last one here. My reference angle is pi over 3. Okay, this is double minus 1. So this would go in the fourth quadrant, but instead of going for this direction, we're actually going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, this direction. So this is going to be in quadrant 1. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Sine of pi over 3 is 1 half. I feel like I messed it up somewhere else. <coughs> Sorry, guys. So cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. It's positive in the first quadrant, but I want the reciprocal. I'm going to flip this upside down, so the final answer for that is going to be 2. Finally, on to another section. Okay, we're going to convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians. Here's my trick. If I'm in radians, I need to get rid of the pi, so I'm going to divide by pi. Pi and 180 are, are equivalents just in different units, so pi, pi um, radians is the same as 180 degrees, so that's why we can use this as a conversion. If I'm in degrees, to get to radians, I need a pi, but I'll divide by 180. So in these problems, we're starting with degrees both times. So we want to get 135 into radians, so I'm going to multiply by pi, divide by 180. Remember, this is the same as that over 1. So unfortunately, this is a little bit gross. Um, the, the first thing I notice that goes into both of these when I'm simplifying is 5. Um, so the, here's my shortcut for doing this. I'm going to look at 100 first. 5 goes into 120 times. And 5 goes into 35 7 times. So if I divide out 5, that's going to be 27. Um, 5 goes into 120 times. 5 goes into 80 16 times. So 20 and 16 together is 36. I'm just simplifying. These are both divisible by 9. So that's going to give me a final answer of 3 pi over 4. Let's do this again. I have 240. I need to convert it into radians, so I'm going to multiply by pi and divide by, ooh, whoopsies, sorry guys, 180, not 360. That'll give me 240 over 180. Notice they both have a, a 10 I can divide by, and they're both also divisible by 6. This goes into, or 6 goes into that 4 times, 6 goes into this 3 times. Okay, lastly, we're at coterminal angles. Um, there's a lot of ways you could have defined coterminal angles. The, the fancy definition is that they have, um, uh, they have terminal sides that coincide. Um, but but the, the formula or the way to think about it is we're going to add or subtract. 2 pi or 360 degrees. Essentially, they're separated by a full circle. So here's what we mean by terminal sides that coincide. If I have an angle, so remember that the initial side's always here, the terminal side might be here. To get to my coterminal angle, my, um, my terminal side is going to rotate a full time around to get back to this point. So for instance, if this is 60 degrees, if I go around a full 360, that's going to get me to 420 degrees. These two angles have the same like terminal side. It's both going to they're both going to get this terminal side to this point. Um, so t so coterminal angles co means together. Um, they're just separated by at least one full circle around. So I need to add or subtract 2 pi in both of these cases. So I'm going to do 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi, and I'm going to do 2 pi over 3 minus 2 pi. Well, notice 
if I add 2 pi, I don't have a common denominator. So I need to, to multiply this by 3 over 3. When I do this, this is going to become 6 pi. And when I do this, this is going to become 3. So if I add 6 pi over 3, I add 2 pi. That will get me to 8 pi over 3. And if I subtract 6 pi over 3, that will give me to a negative 4 pi over 3. So here is my positive and negative coterminal angle. Let's do the same thing over here. I'm at negative 3 pi over 2, but I'm going to add 2 pi. Well, notice right now I don't have a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Okay? If I add that, that's going to give me pi over 2. If I subtract 4 pi over 2, which again is just 2 pi, that's going to get me to negative 7 pi over 2. So those are my two coterminal angles, one positive, one negative. Okay? There's the end of our um, unit one review. Hope you guys found that helpful.